1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7. That Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Nor was the word of the Lord revealed to him yet. That's the same way with dreams. When you have dreams, the dreams that you have is not for you to make a whole lifestyle out of the dream. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 10 says precept upon precept Isaiah 28 10 precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little there a little it said precept upon precept twice in one text why would the Bible say precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line why would it say it two times for precept then two times for line upon line because remember this that the precept upon precept is like two shells line upon line that's like four shelves in all imagine you cooking something and you take from one shelf and the ingredients is on all of the four shelves. It's not really safe for you to instruct an instructor. <laughs> It's not really safe for you to tell somebody like me an instruction. It's not really safe. Maybe you'll understand later on. Maybe later on this week. Maybe later on today. <laughs> maybe later on this year. But it's not really safe for you to instruct the instructor. It's not really safe for you to teach a teacher. <laughs> Imagine if Jesus fell asleep on the boat and Peter said, it's not really safe for you to fall asleep while on the boat. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I try to laugh to conceal the danger. So you take one item off of the four shelves and the four shelves have all of the ingredients to cook the meal. But that's what one precept represents when there's really precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. And imagine you taking one of the ingredients off of one shelf and you need four shelves of ingredients to cook the whole meal perfectly. So what people have done is taken off of one shelf when there's four shelves to the ingredient to their life. And they have based their whole life off of one shelf when there's four shelves. This is why you have to have patience if you're going to win in the spirit because everything doesn't come to you immediately. It doesn't come to you immediately. Even discernment doesn't come to you immediately. How many times have you deemed somebody dangerous and they were safe? You deemed somebody safe and they was dangerous. So patience is protection for accuracy. Patience is the protection of accuracy. It's through patience that you have perfection in your discernment. It's through patience that you understand the will of God. 
You understand. Ephesians talked about understanding what the will of the Lord is. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Which is different than just knowing it but understanding it. Jonah under, knew that he was a prophet. He didn't understand why he was a prophet. Because if he understood, he wouldn't have got mad at Nineveh. Or not even mad at Nineveh, mad at the instruction to preach or go to Nineveh. So patience is a purity path from God. It's through patience that you become pure. You cannot be pure if you're not patient. Why do people say the wrong thing? Or why do people do the wrong thing? Because they do it outside of patience. Why does somebody have a baby and it's not time to have a baby? They did it outside of patience. Why does Moses strike the rock instead of speak to the rock? He lost his patience. Why does Peter go to sleep when Jesus is telling him to watch and pray? Because he doesn't have patience to stay awake. If you look at stories in the scripture, people did stuff wrong when they left patience. King Jesus wasn't telling him he was never going to go to sleep, but he didn't have patience to wait until the appropriate time. Why does Elijah run when he hears Jezebel threaten him? He doesn't have patience to wait and see the solution that God has. For him. He doesn't have patience. <laughs> he doesn't have patience. <laughs> he doesn't have patience. Why do we see that Gehazi takes from Naaman? He doesn't have patience. Remember, what does Elisha tell him? It wasn't the time for this. Elisha deals with patience. He said, you took from Naaman, but it wasn't the time for this. So every bad decision is done outside of patience. You have never made a wrong decision in patience. Because patience is the appropriate time that God wants you to move. God wants you to speak. God wants you to think. God wants you to connect. God wants you to disconnect. It's the appropriate time. Patience is involved in when Apostle Paul said, in him I move. The movements of Apostle Paul was rooted in patience. James was a master of patience. What type of apostle was James? Patience. He was a patient disciple. James was a disciple that walked in patience. So John... James did not do things outside of God's timing. That's why he said, let patience have a perfect work. Because John knew that this angel was needed. That she was needed. Just like the wisdom angel. If you're going to hear from God clearly, you have to love patience. Patience... It allows your spiritual ears and eyes to operate. And patience is more than just waiting. Patience is also contentment. In contentment, you're not waiting. In contentment, you're celebrating what you already been given. So patience is not just waiting. It's also contentment. 
It's also the rejoicing of what you already have achieved. The rejoicing of what you have already possessed. The rejoicing of what you have already understood. Praise God for your current level of understanding to get to the next level of understanding. Praise God for your current level of health to get to your next level of health. You thank God for your current level of wisdom to get to your next level of wisdom. You praise God for your current level of obedience to get to your next level of obedience. So patience is the recognition of what is already active. Imagine if a prophet is prophesying, if he thanks God for giving him the power to prophesy to two people or to teach two messages underneath the anointing, how much more messages would God give him? Which is one of my secrets. Whatever you thank God for, he is motivated to multiply that very thing to you. Whatever you praise God for, he has encouragement. Your thanksgiving, or, or let me say it like this, whatever you thank God for, he has encouragement to release that to you in higher amounts. Thanksgiving anoints God to keep supplying. Thanksgiving encourages God to keep multiplying. It's through patience and thanksgiving that you possess clarity. Through thanksgiving, through praise, through patience. You have great understanding. Proverbs talked about two different things. It talked about good understanding. Then it talked about great understanding. Good understanding is not the best, but it give it favor. Great understanding not only causes you to access favor, but great understanding allows you to give favor. A good understanding allows you to give favor or, 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 or to receive favor. But great understanding causes you to give favor. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So great understanding is the next level after good understanding. Good understanding, you get rewarded. Great understanding, you are the rewarder. See, if I had do do understanding, I will listen to the person that told me that it's not safe for me to do this. <laughs> it took me and Trump off of Twitter, which is a prophetic sign. Both voices that got something to say to expose lying Satan with his bald head self. All I'm going to do on judgment day, I ain't even going to be worried about no judgment. I ain't worried about no hell. Double flood pluck hell. I couldn't live with demons. No way. They don't want me down there in hell. I'll be slapping people down there. <laughs> they don't want me in hell. We're going to tr change twit and put an SH in the front. <laughs> they don't want me in hell, man. They don't want these wisdom doors in hell. 
And then, ah, here he come again. Tell him, if you're taking notes, write that down. Ah, here he come again talking about his teeth white. <laughs> Hell don't want me, man. By five demons down in Tulsa, I was looking for somebody that was pretty down here for the longest. <laughs> Shaq, what you doing down here? <laughs> ah, 